Here we're going to clean the drawbars, switches, and keys on a Hammond A101. In order to get the top off, what I do is take the locking screws off the start run switches and the locking nut off of the reverb pot. If you prefer to unsolder the wires for these, that's perfectly up to you. I just don't like to unsolder stuff unless I have to. There's two screws on either side of the music rack. Removing those, you can lift the top. Now there's a bracket, as you can see, that holds the wires in place for the start run switches and the pilot light. Simply take those screws out and the top comes off. Now the drawbars are visible. What I do, uh, in case you're not familiar with the wire colors, go ahead and just note them on there. It'll save you trouble in the long run unscrew the springs and be very careful when you pull the springs out there's two contacts on the end of that spring and the contacts are connected by a very very small wire the wire is very easily broken so you want to take care not to damage that next thing you want to do is disconnect the wires from either side of the preset panels this is going to disconnect electrically the drawbar assembly from the organ Next thing you're going to do is unscrew the drawbar assembly and you're going to note that some screws have lock washers underneath them and some don't. What you're going to do is take the large screws that have the lock washers off and leave the rest of them alone. Now the whole drawbar assembly comes off. There's uh, two wood screws, one on either side and two of these long black screws that will hold that whole panel in place. Once those screws are off, the panel just simply lifts up out of the way. Back to the drawbar assembly, what we're going to do is first uh, take the keys off, the, uh, the, 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 the drawbar buttons off, and they're simply held in place with a screw on the bottom. I do this so I can clean everything very thoroughly. Next thing you want to do is remove all of the screws that have nuts on the bottom of them. When you look at the underside of the drawbar, you'll see. It would be a very good idea for you to draw a schematic or make note of which screws go where because when you put this thing back together again it'll make it a lot easier. Scrub the contacts with contact cleaner. I polish them with a pink pearl, rinse thoroughly, spray with compressed air, rinse thoroughly again. Just be careful what kind of contact cleaner you use. When this thing goes back together again, it really can only go one way. The notches on that, the plastic pieces there, uh, will only go one way. But you just need to make sure you got front to front, back to back. So make sure everything is marked when you put it back to when you take it apart. It'll make it a lot easier for you. Now you're going to put all of the screws back in their appropriate places. Just the screws with the nuts on the end of them. What I like to do now is when I'm putting the drawbars back, I'm going to put a little bit of silicone, uh, pure silicone grease on the drawbars only in the places that uh, actually make contact. And that's along the sides and, and the bottom. Just a very, very thin film is all you need. Too much just gets pushed out of the way anyway. So just be judicious in the use of that. Now the switches on both sides, both the percussion switches and the vibrato switches work very much the same. You can see the white plastic part simply pushes the contact open and closed. There's really no need to take this completely apart if you don't want to. I chose to do it because the switches and around them were really dirty and I wanted to clean it. So if you want to just clean up underneath those switch contacts, uh, there's no need to go any further. These are the springs that, that perform the snap action to make them the, the rockers stay open or closed. To remove them, all you have to do is obviously take the screw out. Just make sure you have your fingers on top of those springs because it will pop out and go across the room and underneath the workbench in some dusty corner of the shop that you'll never be able to find again.
Now there's an axle that runs the length of the switch box and it's just a simple matter of sliding that axle out which re releases all of your switch tabs and the, the plastic component anyway and uh, and from then it's just a matter of lifting the plastic out of the way. Now again that might not ne be necessary depending upon how thoroughly you want to clean these things but I wanted to polish this thing up nice. Now this is the vibrato selector. Uh, this is what happens when you turn that knob up on top. There's a gear that turns the rotary motion 90 degrees and these cams are going to activate certain switches and uh, again that I did not take apart whatsoever I just cleaned all the contacts. This is the, uh, the, the switch on the other side it works exactly the same way as the percussion switches. Putting them in obviously is the reverse of the uh, of taking it apart there's really n nothing uh, amazing about doing this is a matter of just uh, putting it back and being very careful when you do so that you don't bend the contacts. I put uh, uh, clean those contacts with uh, deoxid and I, what I'll do is put uh, a little bit of deoxid on a piece of uh, business card or something like that to uh, to kind of scrub them clean and then flush the whole thing and remove, re replacing these it really is not that big a deal. I use a pair of, uh, of tweezers as you can see and just kind of snap the little spring back in place and she works as good as new. What you don't want to do is deform those springs. Now to get to the keys to clean them if you want to do that at this time there's a uh, piece of uh, felt gasket on a, on a piece of angle back there that has to be taken off is a screw on either side of it. What I do when I'm cleaning the keys is take them off and put them directly above where they came off of. You can see I have a couple of pieces of wood just holding the keys there. That makes it a whole lot easier and, and it's a whole lot easier to keep keep them straight. Again when you take those apart the uh, black keys have to go on last, the white keys go on first. You might want to take a look at the video that I have of the H key replace. It has a good representation of the back of those keys. What you want to do is make sure that when you tighten that screw that you rock the key back and forth ever so slightly to seat the little tabs and the holes in the springs of the keys. If you don't get those seated you're going to bend things up and the keys are all going to be out of whack. This is what it looked like beforehand. Uh, you can see it had the these um, stickers on them. Some of the stickers are peeling off they were kind of nasty dirty so I, I buffed all of the keys with a, with a buffing wheel and polishing rouge